And now we are going to be discovering how AI and advanced technologies are driving innovation across industries. To talk all of this and so much more, please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Asma Al Halase, CEO of Ambulatory Health Services at Saha Abu Dhabi. Irina Zaprazet, President and General Manager for the Meta Region at Eli Lilly. And your moderator for this session, Mariam Farag, founder of Humanizing Brands. Please welcome your speakers to the stage. Over to you, Mariam. Thank you, Sally. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I start and uh, welcome my speakers, I would like to thank Khulud for organizing such an inspiring summit for the second edition in Riyadh. Honestly, such a remarkable um, group of inspiring women, um, fostering meaningful conversations, and, and you know, it's endless, and tomorrow, inshallah, we will see much more discussions. Without further ado, I would like to start um, as our discussion today focuses on technology. Um, it's evolving, it's reshaping industries. So I want to focus on what strategies should companies and institutions adopt to ensure that women are supported and empowered in STEM fields, especially within this day and age. Um, Dr. Asma, if you don't mind, I want to start with you. How is AI transforming family business nowadays? Um, and I'm, I'm loving the, the fun outside. <laughs> and what specific advancements are you most excited about in improving patient care, which is your main focus? Well, thank you for the invitation. Um, imagine with me, super smart, super fast physician assistant who can go through massive amounts of data, analyze that data, and give you a rapid diagnosis without getting tired. Not only that, this assistant can also help you discover new treatments and actually predict public health crisis. That's what AI is for us. Now, AI can actually detect findings in radiology and lab results, even the most observant eye would miss. And it does that with very little dependence on human resources. And that for us is a game changer because one of the biggest challenges that we have in healthcare is the availability of these talented resources. So what we do to utilize AI in family medicine is to start with creating better access for our patients. Those who are in remote areas, rural areas with very less access to healthcare. We use AI in telepresence and teleconsultations to provide them the healthcare services that they need. In 2022, AH was the first organization in the Middle East to employ AI in retinal screening, and especially in diabetic retinopathy. We have conducted more than 10,000 screenings, and imagine reducing this complicated, time-consuming, disturbing procedure for a patient to three seconds only. At Pure Health, which is our parent company, we took both and clubbed it in employing AI uh, in basically giving our patients control of their own patient journey. We've created an application, Pura, and Pura is not just an ordinary application, it's your lifetime companion. It takes the traditional healthcare, physical and mental, and applies AI so that patients can skip through the routine processes, go through their journey in more efficient, both in process and time, uh, and at the same time, giving them the freedom to focus on what's important, their life, their health span. Interesting um, that you started um, early um, and, and still going and, and creating more impact. Um, 
Irina, I want to uh, move on to you. Um, Eli Lilly, um, as a company, has a long legacy of innovation. How does the company's commitment to R&D um, drive breakthroughs in critical health areas like cancer, like Alzheimer's, obesity, and diabetes? Thanks for this question, and I'm very happy to be here with Forbes again. Thank you, Forbes, for organizing this amazing event, and I'm looking forward to meeting uh, many familiar faces and making new friends around here. So the question of innovation, definitely, Lily is about innovation, and uh, I will tell you that every year we invest from 25 to 30 percent of our global revenues uh, towards innovation. So it's it's a very important topic for us, and I think this is one of the reasons why many say that uh, we have probably the best pipeline in the industry today. So that's investment definitely pays off. But it's not only finding the molecules, it's also how do we make sure that we bring them to the patients and how do we accelerate uh, that process. I'm very proud to say that we managed to decrease our drug development timelines from 11 uh, years, which is the industry average, to six years. So that helps to bring products to patients much faster, and that allowed us to launch about 20 new molecules in the past 10 years. Acceleration is one thing, but persistence and resilience is another one. And the example of really big persistence that I would like to share with you is Alzheimer's disease. So it took us 35 years to find a solution. We've been trying, trying, and trying. And I'm very happy to say that today we found a solution for patients uh, suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And again, 35 years of work and long journey. Coming back to acceleration, we spend a lot of time understanding what the needs of the patients globally are. And um, another example I will share with you is obesity. Obesity is a chronic disease that today touches more than a billion people around the globe. So that's a big deal that's, that's very important. And uh, another statistic um, that is quite shocking, actually, that 2.8 million people die of uh, complications of obesity every year. So what are we doing about this? And I think when we look at the kingdom, for example, the rates of obesity here in this country are quite high. It's about 30% diabetes uh, close to 18 percent and when we were looking at the global uh, context of this we definitely realized that Saudi Arabia is the country that has a need um, to really address the the patient needs suffering with obesity and we managed to prioritize Saudi Arabia and bring solutions here very quickly after the approvals in the US so it's the persistence it's the acceleration and substantial investment that goes into R&D that helps us to move the message forward and help people live better lives around the world. Absolutely, this is very inspiring, especially the part on Alzheimer's, because um, personally, I wanna know more about that. And if we have time, I think a lot of the audience would like to know what is the solution? What have you really innovated and what's out there? Um, speaking of healthcare and speaking of technology, we cannot ignore that we're in the Forbes Women's Summit. So I want to take that chance and talk about uh, women in STEM. Um, Dr. Asma, as a leader in, in healthcare, how do you see AI contributing the, to the empowerment of women in STEM and driving innovation in, in the sector? Let me start by saying that there are great opportunities for women to contribute. They can take the lead in areas which have not been pioneered yet, and especially when it comes to uh, data learning, uh, sorry, to data science and machine learning. Now, um, I would like to look at it the other way around. I would like to say that women should play a critical role in the development of AI. After all, a program or a system that is not developed by everybody will not work for everybody. 
And, and that should inspire us to motivate more women, younger women, to contribute, to get involved so that we can guarantee that we have a positive future of AI. Um, I'm very thrilled to say that in the UAE, specifically in the UAE, we have taken leadership in that front. 61% of STEM graduates in the UAE are women against 57% in the rest of the world. That's according to UNESCO. Um, is that enough? No. N not for the Arab world and even beyond. We need to do more. We have to give more. And that actually, again, uh, made the UAE be a leader in that area again. Uh, let me talk about the Emirati Women Chapter. The Emirati Women Chapter is the ideal description of what I say we should do. Empowering women by creating exquisite, specific mentorship program for them. Now, this exclusive program uh, is under the patronage of Her Highness Sheikh Fatma Bint Mbarak, Umm al-Imarat, in association with Pure Health. Uh, and it translates the vision of Pure Health uh, to focus on emiratization. So the program gives women an individual tailor-made program, mentorship program, that brings out their creativity, their individuality, their passion, so that in the future, this started in March of 2024, can contribute to a more sustainable UAE, uh, to more, uh, to the, in general, not only to the UAE as well as to the, to the Arab world. And I, I suggest that we have more of these mentorship programs and more of these empowerment uh, systems for women across the Arab world. Absolutely. Um, I see the UAE pioneering in so many different industries. Um, and I'm also looking at the kingdom right now. Um, the fact that we are here, we are really starting to look at different industries and how women are taking the center stage. Talking about women in leadership and talking about innovation, AI, technology, STEM, I can't help but talk about in inclusivity for women. How can we include more women within these industries that are really taking a, a different shape in, in our society? Um, you have a strong history of women in leadership yourself. Uh, how does Illy Lily connect um, and, and ensure in inclusivity um, approaches for uh, success and innovation? That's a very good question, and uh, I can talk for hours about this, so, but I will try to be brief and summarize. So we take inclusivity, equality, and equity very seriously. We cater to patients who are men and women. So when we look at our clinical trials programs, when we look at our R&D, definitely we want to make sure that both genders are well represented. When we look at the history of Lale of 150 years, it's, women have always played a very substantial role from the very beginning of where the company was uh, established in 1876. So uh, Colonel Lilly, who established Lilly a long, long time ago, um, when he built his first chemical manufacturing plant, he hired four people one of his hires was a woman. In 1913, the first physician was hired by Lily, uh, uh, that was Dr. Stewart, and she had a massive impact on innovation and technology at that time. So she pushed things forward, and a lot of innovations today really w were born in, at that time. So definitely the history of innovation, the um, uh, history of inclusion, is very important to us and um, I can tell you that today if I look at my team in GCC 51% of employees are female and that's across GCC and I'm very proud to say that with my team that I work with half of them are female so we do a lot and we do it on a daily basis it's 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 embedded in our DNA and we have a few programs that are focused on female leaders, but at the same time, I think it's what we do every day is more important. And for me, it's 
understanding the needs of the female employees, the same as with male employees, understanding what are those special moments in life where the talent needs support, providing that support and making sure that you share your stories, I share my story with uh, my team and I hope that my career can inspire others to not to be afraid, to have a sense of purpose and uh, move only ahead towards the goal. Absolutely, I can definitely resonate uh, with that and also what Dr. Asma mentioned at the beginning, which is mentorship. Every single institution, organization, brand should have a mentorship program for women and men because we all need, you know, we all need someone to guide us, we all need someone to talk to. Um, speaking about human-to-human -human connections, which is something that I love to talk about the most, and, and humanizing brands, I want to close our, sadly, close our discussion because we can go on and on about AI and technology. Um, what do you see as the most exciting opportunity for AI to create not only meaningful but humane lasting impact in healthcare over the next decade? Um, Dr. Asma, if you don't mind starting with you. Premium longevity. What do I mean? Communities are aging, they're growing older, but it's not healthy span, it's sick span. So, we want to apply AI to ensure that as we grow older, we stay healthier, preventing disease as much as we can, giving people an opportunity to connect with their, you know, the younger generations, with the grandchildren, and to build memories, not pain. That's what yeah. I believe in. Yeah, absolutely. Build, I love that. Build, continue with memories and not pain, 100%. Irina. And I would, I think I would echo to uh, what Dr. Asma was saying. Um, we are about human health. But today we understand that human cannot function without some sort of support. And for me, AI is a tool to give us insights, to give us solutions faster, and drive towards those unmet needs that are still out there. There are so many health needs that are still out there without solution and AI is going to help us be there faster. They are not, AI will never, in my view, in my humble opinion, will replace human, but at the same time it can facilitate the journey and it can move us to meeting the needs of patients around the globe much faster. Faster, quicker, more impactful, efficient. Um, definitely we should as, as a closing remark and thank you so much for your insights and thank you for allowing me to be your moderator. Um, I believe that we should embrace AI, we should not fight it. Uh, a lot of people fear that AI will take over their jobs. It's, we, are, we are guaranteed that it's not. Human touch is still needed. Thank you so much and thank you for being such a gracious audience. Thank you.